Most of what we know about COVID-19 has come out of studies from China. Well, now the Journal of American Medical Association has published the results of the largest U.S. patient population study, and the data is from hospitalized patients from one of the hardest hit cities in the country, New York City. Nine Health expert Dr. Pyle Coley is here this morning to help us break down all this information. Hey, Dr. Pyle, good morning. Uh, can you tell us more about the demographic makeup of the patients in the study and also there are medical problems. So Natasha, what this study tells us is what types of patients are presenting to the hospital with COVID-19. So it looked at 5,700 patients hospitalized in New York City hospitals, and 40% of them were female and 60% and were male, which is sort of what we're seeing here in Colorado. The median age was 63, again, similar to what we're seeing here in Colorado. And the most common medical problems that they had were high blood pressure, obesity, and diabetes. And what I found very interesting, in fact, was that lung disease, which we worry about so much with this because it's a respiratory virus, was really not all that common for people going to the hospital. So only 9% had asthma, only 5% had COPD, and only 3% had obstructive sleep apnea. It was also interesting that other things that compromise your immune system, like HIV or liver disease, were also not that common and occurred less than 1% of the time. We've been talking a lot about using temperature screening to try to figure out who's sick, but only 31% of people who presented to the hospital actually had a fever when they presented. So that tells you really how insensitive that temperature screening is. And then finally, we found out that 2% of people had not only COVID infection, but a secondary infection like pneumonia or something else. Yeah, that's really interesting. I mean, by doing these studies, we get a better idea of the virus and how it's reacting to. Um, how did the hospitalized patients do? Yeah, so that, that was also very interesting. So one in every seven patients or 14% of people that presented to the hospital ended up in the ICU and 12% or one in every eight patients ended up on the ventilator. And interestingly, those with diabetes were more likely to get on the ventilator. So that's really standing out as a high risk signal. 3% were on dialysis. And this is the number that really surprised me, 21% died. So one in five patients that went to the hospital died. And if you were one of those 12% that ended up on the ventilator, your chance of dying was 88%. So, you know, that's kind of alarming. And if you break that down by age, if you're over the age of 65 and end up on the ventilator, you have a 97% chance of dying. Yeah, another surprising number in, in what you just showed that 88% of those on the ventilator uh, died. Why was that the case? Yeah, so what we saw in China was about 50% of people on the ventilator died. What we saw in the UK was about 66% died. And here we're seeing the highest reported number so far from any country, really. And I think there could be two reasons. One could be that people maybe presented to the hospital a little bit later. So they had a little bit longer before they got you know, medical care, and that could have compromised the course of their illness. But the second, which worries me more, is I think reflects that New York City has really been overwhelmed in terms of medical resources, mm -hmm. and they were really trying to put out fires as fast as they could. And you can see that when you, you know, you flood a system with all these patients, it patients do worse just because there's not as much medical attention to each patient. Yeah, that makes total sense. Dr. Coley, thank you so much.